Hello, uh, Paul Beckwith. So this video is continuing on the previous one where I'm talking about global ocean changes. So basically a long-term study just came out and what it shows is that the wind speeds over the oceans have, has increased about 8% in the southern oceans from about 20 meters per second to about uh, 21.5 or so. So an increase of about 8% the wind speeds. This of course leads to greater wave heights. So wave heights that were averaging about six meters or so have increased about 5% by about 30 centimeters over, over the time period of this study. So these things are significant um, uh, effects or signatures of abrupt climate change, which are not uh, talked about too much. So um, I'm going to go into detail on a paper which shows that as you get more and more energy going into the ocean, then the winds over the ocean increase and also the um, wave action increases. So Shackleton, I think he just wants to uh, have a snooze. So, okay, I'm putting him to sleep. I hope uh, the other cats out there and people are um, engaged and not uh, put to sleep by this video. Okay, so basically um, on my Twitter, Paul H. Beckwith, I've done a number of tweets about, about these, uh, these effects, these global, o global ocean change effects. Okay, so the paper um, at question is came out fairly recently and this is open source. You can just Google the title and find the paper yourself and follow along or or uh, I'm going to talk about the highlights and lowlights of the paper but you can uh, get the nitty-gritty details from the paper and also from the um, the from from a supplementary information document with even more detail but let's talk about the highlights so so basically the global wave power power is energy per unit time um, it's basically the transport of the energy from the wind into sea surface motion that's increased globally 0.4 percent per year um, it's also increased more in some ocean basins versus other ones. So this does, look, the, the data is examined in this paper and uh, let, let's look at the highlights of this. So this is the mean annual global wave power. Units are kilowatts per meter and it divides it up into the different ocean basins. So this is from 1948 to present essentially so we have the Atlantic Ocean, okay? In basically, all of the basins are increasing. The wave power is increasing. The global is the black line, okay? That's the average of all of the oceans globally. And then it's divided up into various oceans. So we've got the Atlantic Ocean increase here. We've got the Pacific Ocean here, which is increasing um, at a similar rate, but slightly elevated levels to the Atlantic. We have the Indian Ocean here increasing, very similar actually to the global average, but then we have the Southern Oceans. Okay, so the global wave power starts off being much higher and the increase is actually, you know, it looks like it's uh, super above linear, like it's not just a, a linear increase, it looks like it's bending upwards a bit here. Okay, so, and the Southern Ocean is defined as latitudes between 40 degrees south and 80 degrees south. Okay, so the uh, basically the power, the dynamics of the ocean, the wave action, is, waves are getting higher, waves are getting therefore more energetic, more powerful, and the period is also increasing. So the time between wave crests, if you like, is also increasing. And this makes sense because it, for longer waves to build up, they generally have longer periods. Okay, um, this is the 
Again, this is the global wave power and some satellite. This is the satellite era here starting at a, okay, where this was measured. You know, so from the early 90s, there were satellites that were looking at the ocean specifically, looking at these effects. And the data from those matches very closely with the, um, with the, the, uh, the other data. So this is a good, a good um, confirmation that what's being measured from the satellite is correct. Um, this is global sea surface temperature anomaly as it's increasing, <clears throat> minus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.2, 0 0.3. Remember that the heat capacity of the oceans is huge. So the thermal stability, um, the amount of heat, like so 93% so of the heat from global warming is going into the oceans. That's raising the temperature, but because the water is a lot more dense than the air and the, uh, you know, it, it, uh, the, the heat capacity of water is enormous. It takes a tremendous amount of heat to raise the ocean, so this moderates the temperature change. And this is the residual, so if you take, if you take a fit through here and, and then take the curve and subtract the linear increase, you get just the fluctuations. Uh, here's another view, historical seasonal variability in oceanogra oceanographic forcing global variability. Okay, so this is the global wave power um, from a couple different data sets. Global seasonal wave power is the blue line. Global seasonal wave power, that's the NCEP data. Then the CFSR data, another data set, is the black line here, just more recently. And then the global sea surface temperature anomaly, and you can see how they're tracking. So as we put more and more heat into the ocean, we increase the global sea surface temperature then we there's more we have a more energetic surface and the global wave power increases then the, the, this is some statistical analysis where you try to correlate the global wave power to the sea surface temperature anomaly and if you look at the where the yellow and green lines are as you increase the sea surface temperature anomaly as it increases then the global wave power increases you know, there, there's a good correlation between them. Again, this is showing it graphically, global wave power, sea surface temperature anomaly, and you can see how the data fits in here. And this is, uh, the, um, this is the change in the slope or the rate of change, um, and you can also see an increase. Now, where is the wave power increasing in the oceans? It's not increasing uniformly in all spots. So this is the spatial trend. This is a percent change per year in the mean wave power from 1985 to 2008. Okay, and what you can see is, you can see there's some ocean basins where there's decreases, but if you go, especially in the southern oceans and near some coastlines, the, um, the, the mean wave power is increasing significantly. So especially look here off of the west coast of South America, huge increase in the global wave power, some increases here, also increases off of the west coast of Africa. Okay, and as you go down deeper and deeper it, into the far deep south, further and further south, you can see the increases here just north of Antarctica. Okay, uh, this is the uh, some some this is relating it to El Nino's. So if this is the Nino um, O3 uh, standardized index, you can see powerful El Nino's up here um, in the red areas and La Nina's here. So this is a very strong 1998 one El Nino. This is 82 to 83 one and so on. Okay, uh, it doesn't show the more recent 2015, 2016 one, but then you can, when you do the correlation um, with the sig significant wave height, you can see that, you know, a lot of the increase in the wave height here, uh, you know, when there's El Nino events, it creates uh, increased uh, wave height and energy in these particular regions. Um, if you do the same correlation with the 
um, AMO um, index, okay, which is high here, low for this period, high here. You can see that the um, there's a good correlate, like in the southern hemisphere, the correlation is very high. When the AMO is high, the significant wave height and the wind speeds over the ocean are increased in the southern hemisphere. And this just shows some of the cor correlations between different regions. Uh, the symbols here are just relating to the area. So this is extra tropical North Pacific, tropical, um, tropical um, uh, Pacific, um, extra tropical South Pacific, uh, tropical Indian Ocean, extra tropical um, SI, extra tropical South Indian Ocean, and so on. Just different symbols, and it's showing you, you know, the correlations. There's strong correlations um, from one region to another. You know, they're stronger in some regions than they are in other regions. So this is a very strong correlation, strong correlation, and uh, somewhat weaker correlation. Okay, so this paper um, basically goes into all of those details, and the supplementary information is also interesting. If you want to look at some more details of, of the statistics of it, um, this is the uh, mean annual global wave power uh, graph again, showing the increase of the different basins. And uh, there's more and more detail. Like this is interesting. This is the 100 year significant wave height. Significant wave height for a return period of 100 years calculated by the annual maximum method for the 61 year global uh, GOW wave data set. And it's showing, um, so significant wave height, this is in meters. Okay, so it's showing, you know, look at, you can get 14, 16, greater than 18 meter waves. And these waves are more likely to occur up in these areas here, the North Atlantic, the North Pacific, and also in the Southern Oceans, all the way across here. You know, we know that the wind speeds going through the Drake Passage and the roughness of the ocean, these are some of the roughest areas in the world because there's no land masses to stop the ocean here. The ocean here is confined, so the fetch, if you like, is more limited. Here, you can go around the complete circumference of the Earth at these latitudes and just have ocean. So the southern annular mode, the winds can get very strong, the waves can get very strong, and, uh, you know, it's very treacherous for... Um, for, for uh, ship passage down in those regions. Some more in, informa change in wave power from 1948 to 2008. Again, you can see you know, huge increases here in the Southern Ocean. And again, this kind of makes sense because, because of the, you know, I can relate this to the Arctic temperature amplification. You know, what happens in the Arctic doesn't stay in the Arctic. The Arctic the huge temperature increases in the Arctic is really um, reconfiguring the atmospheric wind patterns and the ocean patterns on the entire planet. Um, and as a result, we're seeing, you know, very profound changes in the southern hemisphere. Way, you know, uh, wind speeds over the ocean and wind heights, you know, directly resulting from more heat going into the southern hemisphere from the equator than previously because of the greatly warming Arctic. Percentage of change here and uh, so on. Okay, so, so basically what we have here is, you know, we're, we're getting a reconfiguring of the um, entire planet. We've changed the chemistry of the atmosphere and oceans We've changed the, you know, the, the Earth is warming rapidly, much faster than expected. The far north, the Arctic, is warming, you know, at much, much higher rates than the rest of the planet. So that changes the, the heat flows in both the atmosphere and oceans. About two-thirds of the heat that tr tr is transported from the equator to the poles is in the atmosphere about one third is in the oceans, and uh, we're we're basically you know everything is rapidly changing, and I'm trying to bring you this information. Thanks for listening.